Blue cheese in rainbow colors. Researchers have developed new strains of mold. British scientists have found a new way to produce blue cheese. For this purpose, they developed new strains of mold that can be used to produce cheeses with unprecedented colors. The taste of the products has also changed. Although, as researchers point out, the differences are subtle. We don't have good associations with mold. Usually visible on food products, it means that they are no longer suitable for eating. But there are species of mold that are safe for humans. This is the so-called noble rot. They are used, among others, in the production of blue cheese. They give them a soft consistency excellent taste and make the cheese melt in your mouth. Camembert, Brie, Azure and Gorgonzola are the most popular types of blue cheeses. Mold causes cheeses to take on a blue or blue-green tint. Researchers from the University of Nottingham claim they can produce blue cheese in other colors. After discovering how the classic blue-green veins in blue cheese are formed, researchers have created many different strains of fungi that can be used to produce cheese with colors ranging from white to yellow-green, red-brown, pinkish, and light and dark blue. The results and description of the research were published in the journal, NPJ Science of Food. Mold cultures from the species Penicillium camemberti or Penicillium candidum are used to produce cheese. Cheeses with mold growth are made from these. The species Penicillium roqueforti, Penicillium gorgonzola and Penicillium glaucum are used to produce cheese with mold overgrowth, i.e. with mold in the entire mass of the cheese not only on its surface. British researchers took a detailed look at the species Penicillium roqueforti. Cheeses made from these mushrooms, roquefort, stilton and gorgonzola, have a blue-green color. It comes from spores produced by the growth of mushrooms. Scientists began their research by determining the biochemical pathways that produce pigment in Penicillium roqueforti spores. They used genetic analyzers combined with bioinformatics. As they found out, the pigment does not appear immediately in blue. It starts with white and goes through different shades until it reaches the classic color that we all know. Scientists have found that the blue pigments of the spores start out as white, gradually turning into yellow-green, red-brown-pink, dark-brown, light-blue, and finally blue with a hint of green. By manipulating genes within this pathway using food-safe techniques, they were able to produce different color variants of spores that could be used to make cheese. Scientists, of course, checked whether the new strains did not cause any effects that could threaten consumer safety. The way we approached it was to induce reproduction in the fungus. So for the first time we were able to generate a wide range of strains with new, attractive flavors, both mild and intense. We also created new color versions of some of these innovative strains. Admitted Paul Dyer, who led the study. A team of researchers produced cheeses with new strains of fungi. He tested them using diagnostic instruments in the laboratory to determine their taste. We found that the taste was very similar to the original blue varieties from which they came. 
There were subtle differences, but not huge ones, Dyer noted. What was interesting was that once we got down to making the cheese and did some taste tests with volunteers from across the university, we found that when people tried the lighter colored varieties, they thought they tasted milder. These people believed that the darker strain had a more intense flavor. Likewise for the more reddish brown and light green versions. People thought they had a fruity and spicy element to them, when according to laboratory instruments they tasted very similar. This shows that people actually perceive taste also based on what they see, the researcher emphasized.